Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the French Watch Collector channel. Today we have a beautiful Zenith watch, a very speci specific model which is a Zenith Eurodate. Uh, this is a model that uh, I couldn't find much information on, like looks like it's a quite a rare model uh, with a date function. You will see the movement uh, later on in the video and uh, it's a standard movement where they put a date function on top of it uh, and apparently it's one of the first movements from Zenit with uh, date function so this is very interesting and a very unique piece here so let's get started by unscrewing the case back case back is a little bit scratch uh, from a previous uh, probably repair and wow look at this movement uh, gold finish movement, very nice, uh, I mean it's not gold plated, it's just a color which look, I don't know what's uh, plating which is on it but it looks very nice here. Yeah. See a date in it, uh, 84, so maybe that's the last service, I don't know, so this is quite a long time ago. Remove this ring that keeps the movement in place, it looks like it's quite dirty around, like I don't know if it's like the seal or something that melted, but it looks like it's quite dirty around the movement. The movement looks not too dirty. Uh, but yeah, around is uh, it's, it's a bit weird, yeah? So first let's remove the screws. Uh, that's all the movement on the ring. And by the way, like this this watch uh, is very heavy. Yeah? Uh, I mean, it's, it's heavier than, than usual. Um, and you will see like there is this ring around. I don't know what is it made of. But this ring is very, very heavy for, for the size, yeah? It's like a dense material, I don't know what it is, yeah? So let's remove the screws. You can see the, the watch is still be, is beating, so it's working. Uh, not very... I, I put it on a time grapher. Uh, the, the reading was not very good, so yeah, you need probably a service. And hopefully, like, we not see problems in the, in the watch, but yeah, it's, uh, it's running, but not very, very good. And you saw the date, yeah, 84, uh, that's a long time ago. So if it's a light date of service, the last date of service, yeah, that's, it's, yeah, it's in a desperate need of a, of a service, yeah. Very hard to remove the, the stem and the crown and stem, yeah, something stuck in it. So I put and look at it, what's coming out. I don't know what it is, if it's dried up grease or, or stuff that came into the watch. But yeah, that's not nice, that's not good yet to see that. I don't know what we're gonna find inside, we'll see when we move the movement, but yeah, that's not looking very good for now, yeah? It come, it come out quite easily, but we put everything in a cleaning machine and it will come, it will come out like new, but yeah. Okay, let's carry on. Try to see what I can remove, like looks like the movement is not moving. I try to get this ring out of the way, I need to be careful not to damage parts. Uh, yeah, here we go. I got underneath it and, and it's coming out. Okay, the ring is out. And this ring is very heavy. I don't know what is it made out, but uh, it's very heavy. Okay, so now we should be able to remove the movement from the case. Yeah. You can see some uh, dirt, some dirt coming out. Okay, so let's put the the crown assembly back. See, click in place. Let's put it, and we can set up the the, the end. We can line them up uh, to remove them. Yeah? Oh, you saw the date change. So the, the date the, the date changing is working as well. Yeah? Okay, let's protect the dial and I use a uh, Presto tool from version, yeah, to remove the hand. It go underneath the hand, it's like little clothes that go underneath the hand and pull them up, yeah. Okay, so now all the three hands are out. Let's get them out of the way to carry on disassembling the watch, yeah. Need to be careful not to scratch his dial. His dial is, yeah, it, it has a nice patina around, uh, like a kind of uh, orange yellow color, uh, but it's, it's, it's in good condition. It's no, not damaged on a dial, so that's not too bad. I remove the screw, now I go slightly underneath the, the, 
dial to, to remove it, to disassemble it from the movement. There we go, it's coming through, you need to go through. And here we see the movement with the dice ring around, yeah. So you will see this move, movement is a 106 dash 50 dash 6, uh, so which is normally a movement from Zenith with like a center second, uh, not a sub second, center second, but there is no date. Most of the movement, there is no date. So uh, this is, like I said, a very unique movement. Uh, and it's weird, I see, to see the date hanging, like the date disc is hanging, like not on not on a, on, on a mat, I already just on, on the outside of the movement. Normally it's on the top of a movement. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a strange design. Uh, and I think probably it's one of the first design they try to, to, to put a date on a, on a mechanism. So they just modified an existing mechanism. Uh, we remove the plate, so the, the, the calendar plate, just only by two screws. You can see the calendar wheel at the bottom with like little spring on it, a little part. It looks like over complicated, like on some mechanism is much simpler than this wheel. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very different compared to Omega or other Zenith that you, you see movement with like a, a date. So I try to remove because there is nothing to grab where I, I don't want to damage the the date disc. Yeah, here we go. Now it comes and we can see the full movement. Let's place it into a, a movement holder. And we start by replacing the calendar, removing, sorry, the calendar driving wheel. It's all by a screw, normally it's just on a pivot, like this is on a screw, so it's, it's quite tight, so try to remove it very slowly from underneath. Not trying to bend it too much, just a tiny bit, and here we go, here it comes. Okay, there is another disc underneath. It's uh, strange. And you can see it's over the jewel, so yeah, it looks like, yeah, they just, it's, like you can see the base movement is not made for a date yet. Yeah. It's just a quick modification on on a, on the base movement, like, so yeah. I remove the wheel and I remove the cannon pinion again with a special tool, which is a, a presser tool from version, yeah. Okay, come out. And now I move to the other side uh, to start disassembling the main side of the watch. So first, let's remove the power by holding the click spring. Okay, let's use a brass tweezer. Remove gently, release the power very gently. Don't want to damage the main spring inside. Okay, all the power is out and you should see the balance wheel it's slowing down and it's coming to it's coming to a full stop. Yeah. Let's remove the balance assembly. So for the people who know this movement, uh, 106-50-6. When you are on this side, it looks normal. Like uh, there is no difference. Uh, it's on the other side. You saw with the date. So yeah, it looks like they use a standard movement and just put on a date by doing some modification to the other side uh, on the main plate. Yeah. Okay, so now just gently remove the assembly, okay, the balance assembly. And we can carry on now with like uh, removing um, the standard parts. So let's remove the second pinion cock on top of it, which is holding the very long second pinion. Okay, so just be careful by when we remove this part because the second pinion is a uh, yeah, very delicate part. You see the design as well, like it's, it's different, like uh, the spring uh, is uh, coming on, a, on this kind of arc shape. Uh, normally it's like on the balance cock, so yeah. It's, a, it's a different or an evolution, they say, on a mechanism. Now I remove this uh, friction spring that I was talking about, like a very, very tiny screw.
There we go. Now he's out. So again, I use a, a version tool, another one, uh, to remove this uh, this wheel, which is friction mounted. So this tool is very specific. So you have two type of tool. Basically, you have uh, one type to remove uh, the wheels, which have uh, an uneven number of uh, of arms, and um, a, a tool that to remove like the wheels, which are even numbers uh, of uh, of spokes in between. Um, so yeah, it's like with same with little teeth grabbing and pulling just to make sure you pull the wheel straight up, yeah, that you don't want to damage the wheels or the pivot. Um, you, you want to pull everything straight up, yeah. So this is, yeah, you need, for this hobby, you need a lot of equipment if you want to do a proper job, yeah. Uh, and it can be quite expensive, and as you go along, like, you work on more and more complicated movement. Uh, you need to invest uh, in, uh, in equipment. Uh, so, yeah, this is part of the... What makes this hobby very interesting as well is like a lot of uh, tools. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice if you like if you like tools um, and equipment. Yeah, this is a, a nice hobby to pick up. Yeah. Okay, so I remove the pallet fork. You can see there is still a bit of power left in a, in a watch. The wheel is turning, so there is a bit of friction somewhere, probably with dried up oil uh, in the jewels. So yeah, we need we need to clean this watch. Yeah. So let's remove the screws. As well for me, it would be very important that if you can leave up some comments uh, down below for what you want to see uh, on my channels. So that's my first, uh, like I put a couple of videos on YouTube, but I can make the content evolve in one direction if you prefer to see some something specific or if you prefer to see a different type of video or maybe movie which are done in a different way. Just put your comment down below, that will help me a lot to, to improve my channel. So thanks for that. Okay, we remove the plate. Train of wheel bridge. And below we will see the train of wheel. Okay, so the function of the train of wheel is to bring the power from the main spring to the balance assembly. Uh, by reducing uh, by reducing the power, so you have a very strong power in the main spring assembly uh, and a very slow rotation, and it will go down to the escapement wheel where uh, it will turn much faster, and that what we make the, the the watch work. Uh, so this is like yeah, if you like mechanics, this is very interesting. Yeah. It's like a gearbox if you want. It's only it's a gearbox of uh, of the watch. Yeah. So we remove the, the click assembly. And now we are going to remove the ratchet wheel, which is a wheel sitting on top of the main spring barrel assembly. So directly connected to the main spring inside. With, you will see you have a square shape under the screw. There you go. You have a square shape uh, on, the, on the barrel, which is dri driving the main spring underneath. Yeah. You see like a lot of dried up grease underneath or oil. I don't know what they used, uh, but that's not normal. Yeah. So yeah, you really need a good clean. Now I'm taking off the click spring, very small spring. Have to be very careful. Because if they jump, you can have can spend a lot of time looking for them. And now I'm going to get the crown wheel out. So remember, this is a reverse threaded screw. So you need to unscrew the other side. So turning to clockwise. Okay, let's remove all the parts from the crown wheel assembly. So like on my previous video on the, the 106-50.6 uh, movement, you can see it's a lot of part for the crown wheel. So to me, it looks like it's a bit over com uh, complicated. After, it's nice to have some parts like uh, for the wear. So if uh, some parts wear during the, the use of a watch, you just need to replace the plate or the rings that go around and you don't need to change the entire plate. So maybe they did it like for, for maintenance. Um, but yeah, that's a lot more parts than what you see normally on a, on a watch. 
Let's remove these screws. They are very long screws. You see the length of the screws. They are longer than usual on this movement. And this movement, if I yeah, compare to other brands, uh, this Zenith movement, they, they look very solid. They are, they are very thick. Uh, the main plate is very thick. The, the bridge are very thick. They, they are heavier as well than uh, other movement. Um, yeah, they, they look stronger. I don't know, it's like different feel compared to, like for example, an Omega or ETA or uh, other movement from, from this era. They don't look very nice. You can see some polish finish, like it's a bit more polish and in some places. They don't look amazing, but they look very solid, yeah. And they are very nice to work on. Um, let's, let's remove the great wheel and I can remove now the last uh, wheel from the train of bridge. Train of wheel, sorry. Okay. We are getting along quite good. So now let's move to the other side. I remove the screw from the from the top plate from the keyless work. Okay, so now let's remove this top plate, I guess. Here we go, come nice and easy. And we can remove, start to remove the parts so the minute wheel. Remove the spring, which is like a very strong spring that can jump very easily and quite far. It's a small thing, but it can fly very far. Okay, uh, the yoke out and the rest now with the setting lever and the clutch wheel and the weighing pinion, which are left. And we are going to put all this part in a cleaning machine. Uh, so I was using an ultrasonic machine at this time to clean the part. So very important to clean, to clean them very well, uh, to make sure that when you put the watch back together, you have a nice beating movement, a nice amplitude. Uh, and before washing, I put the balance assembly back on the main plate to make sure it doesn't get damaged. That's very important as well, because this is, you can see the spring is so thin. Uh, it's like uh, hair thin almost, yeah. It's a very thin mainspring, so very easy to bend. And if this is bent, your watch, uh, the, the beading will not be good. It will, it will, it will beat out of sync. So this is very important. So let's put a screw to make sure it stay in place during the washing. And like that, the, the balance assembly is protected when you wash it. Yeah? So. There we go. So now it's ready for cleaning. Let's check. Yeah, it's in place. We disassemble uh, the main spring barrel assembly. So remove the top plate. You can see the spring around the, the barrel. So let's remove the barrel. Yeah, the barrel is coming out nicely. And now we remove the spring. Don't want to come so you need to be really careful when you remove them if you want to use them again because some spring are good if you want to use them again uh yeah you need to come very slowly or else when when it come it can it can break as well if it can one go it will jump and you might lose a part as well um so the way to do it is like this with your little finger you turn one side to the other side one side the other side and just take it out turn by turn to make sure it doesn't fly and doesn't break as well Okay, so if you like the content on my channel, if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. There will be many more videos to come and video, better video. So yeah, subscribe, like the video. It will help me uh, to share this video to other people as well on YouTube, uh, other watch, uh, watch lover uh, like yourself. Yeah. So thank you very much for your support. So now we start the reassembly. I put a new mainspring. Uh, yeah, you can find mainspring, like I, I buy most of my parts on cousin.co.uk. It's very easy to find the part in function of your uh, movement. Like, uh, so yeah, I, I buy a lot of parts on this website. It's very easy to find. 
uh, and a great service to be fair. So, and the mainspring is not that expensive. So I like to put new mainspring if I have a doubt on the, on the, on the old one. Before putting the barrel arbor, I put a bit of uh, 9104 uh, at the bottom where the barrel is gonna come in contact. I put the barrel in place, so you need to be, you need to locate in the holes. It's quite hard. Some some movement is uh, hard to put uh, the bar in place, so you need to align everything, and you have a little click as well that need to come in a mainspring, and that will drive the mainspring when the when the watch is winding. So now it's in place. I remove the clamp. There we go. The barrel is in place. Just put a bit of 9104 on the top, where it's going to come in contact with the top of the barrel. Make sure when its turn is uh, nicely lubricated, it turns freely. Those are wear as well. The purpose of uh, lubrication is that you want to avoid as well the wear when it's metal against metal. Yeah? Okay, top plate is in place, and now I use this tool to click it in place. By pushing, it will push a top plate uh, inside the barrel. There we go. Now. The main spring barrel assembly is done. I can put a bit of 9104 uh, on, on the bottom in this hole where the main spring barrel is gonna come. Grab the assembly, put it in place. And now I can carry on by putting strain of wheel. So first the escape wheel. Okay, now you see just sit on his pivot. It's like very, very tiny pivot, like so you need to go in a, in a, in your jewels hole. Now put the fourth wheel, the third wheel, a bit of 9104 in the center. Was gray wheel is gonna come and pivot around. Here I put the great wheel, which is a wheel which is in contact with the mainspring assembly, mainspring barrel. Okay, so now it's in place. I can start putting the bridge. So first I put the train of wheel bridge. So we need to make sure that all the pivots are locating perfectly in all the jewels. And so in order to do that, you just move very slowly the, all the wheels until it clicks in place. And normally when it's in place, you will turn the wheel so and all of them will turn. So they are linked to each other. You could see I moved the wheel and everything was moving, so it looks good. So when, when it's done, you want to put the screws to make sure everything stays in place. Here is very important to take your time when you put uh, the train of wheel because if you don't put it correctly, if it's not turning, if they are not turning, and if you put the so it means that one of the pivot is not aligned, and if you put the main the plate on the top, when you're screwing, you're gonna squash the the pivot and you're gonna bend them or break them, and uh, yeah, that's not good because after you need to look for new parts, and sometimes can be a bit difficult. Yeah. Put a bit of 9104, maybe a bit too much, but uh, yeah, on this part uh, that we connect to the setting lever on, on the other side. And you see this part has a, a little shoulder around, so it's important to put it before you put the the mainspring bridge um, because if you pull it after with the shoulder it cannot pass through the hole so yeah you need to pull it in this way if you forget to pull it you have to disassemble everything on this bridge um, to put these parts so yeah don't forget to pull it first and after you put your 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 mainspring um, barrel plate on top of it
Okay, let's put the screws because now everything is in place, everything is aligned. Speed it up a bit. Quick check, you can see when I when the main spring barrel is turning, everything is turning on a train of wheel. Up to the escape. A bit of 9104 to lubricate uh, the part like between the top of the barrel and the main spring um, barrel plate. Bit of lubrication there as well. Okay, so let's put the spring uh, from the click from the click. So I will hold it in place with the plastic stick to make sure that if it doesn't jump, if it goes, and just bend it slightly. Here we go. That it goes into the groove into this location and it stay in place. So you need to lay down very flat. Now, okay, you see. Is flat. There we go. It's in place. No, it doesn't want to go. You see, it's, it's not flat. So I will use the flat bit to see if it's better. Yes, there we go. Now it's flat. It's sitting flat. Perfect. It's in place. It spring nicely. Okay. Let's move on. So let's put the click. So the click underneath, you have a, a little uh, finger that come on the spring. Uh, so you need to make sure you put it the right, uh, the right side of the spring. Put a 9104 here to make sure it's lubricated properly. Because as we, when you wind the watch, this is this little click that makes the, the sound when when you wind the watch, so it's moving. It's rotating around this uh, little screw very quickly when you wind it, so you need to make sure it's lubricated properly. Especially this is a manual wind watch. Yeah? You can see there is no uh, automatic mechanism, so it means the only way you wind this watch is by winding it. Yeah, uh, there is no automatic uh, by the movement of your of your wrist. Yeah, so you need to make sure it's lubricated properly. Yeah? Okay. Put a ratchet wheel. Yeah, you see the click is moving when you turn, so everything is in place. Maybe not fully like one of the teeth from the click doesn't want to go. You need to go the teeth, need to go in between the teeth of the ratchet wheel. Here we go, now it's in place. The ratchet wheel has nice finish, you can see like kind of a sunburst effect on the top. And on the side, you have like a, a nice polish, uh, like the edge is, is uh, nicely polished. It's a very nice looking part, yeah? It's crazy the amount of time that they spend on these parts. I don't know, like uh, to polish this watch and do this probably take a lot of time. And actually nobody sees them, yeah? especially on this old watch where there is no uh, like case back where you can see through, yeah? It's like uh, fully closed, so the only people who see it they are the watchmakers, so they spend a lot of time uh, working on these parts and make them very nice, actually, only for the watchmaker. Okay, so let's put a bit of, uh, we put a bit of 9104 around uh, the place we're gonna put the crown wheel. There we go, so this, this, uh, this wheel is what is directly connected um, to the other side, uh, to the winding pinion. So when you wind the wheel, you will turn uh, this crown wheel first, and this crown wheel will drive the ratchet wheel uh, that will drive the mainspring, uh, and that's how you you keep the energy inside your watch yeah, that in the mainspring by turning all these wheels. Okay, remember this is a reverse uh, thready screw, so turn it anti-clockwise to screw it. So now let's move to the other side. So uh, we are going to start by uh, greasing the parts. Uh, so for this, we use some uh, 9501 grease, uh, so which is like thicker than the oil that we use on the other side, uh, which is more for like parts which are in contact metal to metal with a lot of friction, a lot of pressure against each other. 
and you will see in in this area you will have a lot of friction and pressure because of some spring that put tension. Um, so this is a clutch and uh, the winding wheel, a uh, winding pinion, sorry, uh, assembly. And now we're going to put the same type of grease, so 9501, on the winding stem, on all the parts which are in contact uh, with uh, steel. Okay, let's put it in place. Oh, if we just align to make sure we have an easy access, we can push it in securely. There we go, it's in, it went straight in. Okay, and you can see the square shape is inside the, the clutch, uh, so which is this long barrel part. Um, you, you, you have a square shape, and the square shape of the stem drive this, um, this clutch here. Yeah? Okay, so now we carry on with the assembly, put a bit of um, 9104 there, around this pivot point, where we're going to put the yoke. Here it is. Again, some grease there, to put at this point, because it will, it will be a contact point between the yoke and the setting lever. And now we can put the spring, and that's what we put, like I said, the pressure on the part, the tension on the part, metal to metal, easy spring, which is quite a strong spring. Yeah. Hold it in place, change, change of uh, tweezer, use this tweezer, which are stronger and in brass so that you don't scratch a part. And here we go, I put it, you saw now, you can release it. Yeah, it's in place. Gently to make sure everything is sitting flat. Yeah, sitting good. Yeah, all the bits are in place. It's sitting flat and yeah, it's keep everything under tension. This arm, we keep pressure on the setting lever. And you see this screw, this, it's a small screw, but the, the head is very long. And you will see why this, uh, this head is very long. Yeah. You will see why later. On, the, on a normal woman, uh, the head is not that long, the top of the screw is not that long. So we carry on lubricating, putting some 9104 uh, around some pivot point, where we're going to put uh, some wheels. Again there, and this is where we're going to put the cannon pinion. You see the, the top plate as well, I mean the plate has kind of a big sunburst effect with like some machining marks which looks quite nice. Uh, yeah, so we press down the cannon pinion which is friction mounted. I like to put the cannon pinion first uh, before the million wheel, so I make sure because if you put the million wheel first and the cannon pinion after, the cannon pinion can be on top of a, a teeth. So when you push it down, you can break or bend the teeth. So doing this way, I push it down, there is nothing around, so it's, it's sure that it's not gonna damage anything. And after this is a minute wheel, I put the minute wheel and make sure everything is aligned perfectly. There is no pressure when I put it. So I prefer to do it this way. Okay. Let's put the last part that we keep everything uh, in place underneath to make sure, like for example, the spring doesn't jump up uh, and keep all the wheel in place. This, uh, this part is all by two little screws. What I like to do when there is part like that with uh, uh, two screws, I like to put one first, but not tied it fully, I just put it in place. And to keep a bit of, uh, let's say, play for the other one to locate properly, and the part will move around, and when both screws are in, I tie them properly. There we go, so now both are in. You see, I did not 
size them fully. First, I'm going to put the, the parts under tension on this little post. And now I can tie the screw here. There you go, that's the first one. And now I do the second one. And now everything will be safely in place on this side for the keyless work assembly. Just check it's working, it's working. So there is only two positions, you see, on this, uh, on this, when I pull on the stem. So only two positions. There is so one position to wind and another position uh, to set the, the time. But there is no third position for the quick set date. So this means this watch doesn't have a quick set date. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning, I think this is one of the first movement with a date from Zenith uh, for, for a rust watch. Um, so yeah, I think they did not put a, a quick function date, which is normal. Okay, let's put this top wheel. Remember, this is a, a friction mounted wheel, which is an extended pivot uh, from the third wheel underneath. So I will press it down. You just need to make sure you press it down as flat as possible so that when the wheel turn, it will turn on parallel to the, to the plate, to the bridge underneath. Do a quick check, see how it turns. If it's touching nothing, if it's turned flat, looks good. So now I put the second pinion, which go in the center. So this second pinion is is drive by this the, by the wheel that I just put in. Let's put the spring, the friction spring. Which come and locate on these two little pins. And after there is a tiny screw that go right in the middle. There you go, I put the screw. And I put the, on top of it, I put the second pinion cock and now I'm putting the screw to keep everything securely in place. Okay, so let's move on and put the pallet fork. So I cleaned the pallet fork previously in a solution which is called one dip. Uh, put it in a one dip for a while, just dry it and clean the two little juice. Uh, just need to make sure I line it properly on the, on the bottom paper. There we go. Now it looks like it's it and you see not fully. Yeah, it is. So yeah, he sit on a, on the bottom pivot and he move left and right around this axis. And now let's put the pallet fork cock on top of it. So there is one pivot, the bottom pivot, which is in the jewels. Now we need to put the bottom, the top pivot, sorry, uh, in the top jewel. There we go, now it's in place. It's not working around. Yes, yeah, work. yeah, now you sit down. You sit, you sit down properly. Let's put a bit of a wine just to check that the watch is uh, working. I mean, the pallet fork is working left and right. With a tiny, you put just a tiny bit of push, tack, and you see it jump. So that's good. To carry on, just we put the screw back to keep it in place again. Very nice looking movement. Like you can see, it's uh, quite clean as well. After after cleaning it in a ultrasonic machine, very nice looking. And before as well, putting this uh, pallet fork, I uh, oiled all the jewels from the train wheel with uh, 9104 and 9010, depending on uh, on the wheel. 
but everything is lubricated and ready to go. And now the last bit, we put the balance assembly in place. And this is the moment of truth. Oh, looks like you want to go. Come on, it, is, it looks like it's not sitting properly. On top of it, yeah, it looks like it's, yes, there we go. Now it's starting. Perfect, it's in place. So what I like to do as well on movement, uh, like I like to, when the movement starts, I like, obviously I oil everything. So like I said, the the jewels from the train of wheel, I will oil as well uh, the shock uh, system from the from the balance assembly. And I leave the moment for the movement for 24 hours, uh, just to make it run, let it run, let, let the oil break a bit and check if everything is okay and, and if it is running well on time graffer. And if it is, after I carry on with the assembly. So that's what I've done, I left it for 24 hours uh, and I carry on with the movement. Uh, so now the, what's left, basically the calendar movement. So you remember this extended head on the, on the screw, put a bit of, bit of oil around because yeah, this is a pivot point uh, for the day jumper. So I put a plate back, you remember this plate back where uh, you will have the date, um, the date driving wheel. Same, I need to make sure I oil everything. There we go, put the date driving wheel. Looks like a very complicated buyer. I don't know. To me, it uh, looks like a more complicated than usual. Ah, you can see there is some movement, some part that move. Hop, it jumped. Okay, I'm lucky it did not go very far, but yeah. So now I can see the wheel, the wheel is sitting properly and I need to put this part back. Yeah. Just put it the correct way. Okay, looks like that's the correct way. And I need to put it back. Okay, now it's in place, uh, coming, it doesn't want to come. Okay, and now I need to arm the spring. Oh, it's jumping. In this, in this moment, you need to be, you keep calm and uh, you don't want to rush. Because like I said, it's very tiny parts like you don't realize on this video, but look at the size of my finger uh, compared to the part here. Yeah. Okay, so I need to make sure it stay in place. I use a bit of my finger, which is probably, probably not a very good practice, but okay, let's use another, my plastic stick to hold it. And now I need to make sure the spring is coming against the part to keep it under tension. You just use one arm of the tweezer. Oh, no, oh, yeah, it's coming back. Come on. It is, okay, perfect. It is in. So let's secure that with uh, the screw and to make sure it stay in place. There we go. <clears throat> there we go, now it's in place. And it will stay in place. Yeah, and you can see it moving. Okay, so next we are gonna put the rest of the calendar. So first the calendar wheel, go around. And I said it's very strange the way he's sitting on this mechanism. Like normally you have a, a track around or it's, it's, it's laid down flat on metal, but this is hanging around like on, a, on the edge. Um, it's very weird. 
Okay, so I put this arm, which is the date jumper. Make sure the date stay in place and the, the disk is not uh, moving. And I put this calendar bridge plate, if you want, on top of it. I need to make sure everything is aligned. And it's very difficult to align because there is not, like I said, the, the, the disk is hanging around. This, there is not a proper place for it. So it's very, like I said, yeah, you, you can see it's a movement that was modified to include a date, but that was not designed uh, for a date at the beginning. Okay, still not in place perfectly. Yes. You see it? Uh, no, it's still working, so it means it's not something is not in place correctly somewhere. There we go. Now it's laying down flat, it's not moving anywhere. So I use, you see, I use my carbon tip tweezers to make sure I don't scratch uh, the top of the part. There we go, looks like it's sitting nicely. Again, when it's in place, just make sure it's secured. This crew doesn't want to go, doesn't want to cooperate with me. Come on. Let's go. Yes, here it is. So when it's in place, you just want to make sure you secure everything with the screws. So it doesn't, it doesn't move. It will stay in place for the rest of the assemblies. These screws are very long. Uh, on, on this movement, like like as you saw on the other side as well, the, the screws are, are long, longer than usual, so they go quite deep uh, in the, in the plates here. Yeah? But when you need to put them, okay. So let's screw the first one. nicely in place and let's do the second one yeah just check like you know, it doesn't it's in place you can as well follow me on my other social media where i put some extra updates you can see the link in my description okay just tidy everything up again yeah it looks okay And the next, it will be this long spring uh, that come against the day jumper. So to keep the day jumper under, under tension. You can see this is quite nice because the spring go, you have a little edge, like it goes underneath. Uh, so yet it doesn't, it will not jump like it's a, it's a nice way to put the spring. So I, I still use a plastic tweezer to make sure it stay in place. And oh, you can see it put tension on a day jumper that locate immediately in between the teeth. Okay, so for the dial, I just will do a light clean, uh, light clean of the dial with, uh, with water. Speed it up a bit, try to remove some specific marks. So now I put the dial back on the on the on the movement, locate the fits in the hole, push everything down, and when that's done, uh, I just screw the screws that come against the fit here yeah, to make sure they stay in place. Okay, good. Everything is back in place. I put it back in this case. So I did uh, some ultrasonic cleaning on a case as well. You can see it's a lot more shiny uh, than it was before. Uh, even if it's the gold plating is a bit damaged, but uh, it's, it's not too bad.
Uh, it's not too bad. You can see his damage on the, on the corners, on the edges, um, but it's not it's not too bad. So I just keep it like that. Now I'm looking. Oh, I don't remember how to put the movement. If it's like the dial come from the top or from the bottom. So now I put it from the bottom. Looks like it's in place. There is this huge and heavy spacer ring that I need to put around the movement so to, ma to make sure the movement stays centered and, and in place. So you need to in the spacer ring there is some some little holes where you can see where, where you will have the stem coming through. So you need to make sure you align everything properly or else you will not go down. So just move it around a bit. You can see the holes on the side, you need to locate where the stem is coming. Come on. Yes, there we go. And now it's laying down. Perfect. Everything is in place. I put uh, the screw, the screws that uh, keep the movement in place on the ring. You remember at the beginning it was quite dirty, like uh, with some gunk around, like the, the 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 case. But looks how clean it is right now. It's nothing. And the stem is the same. Remember when I pulled out the stem, it was very hard to come out uh, with stuff around. Now it's, it's perfect. But I don't know what it was because it was no rust. You, you see no rust in movement. It was just, I guess, dried up grease. I put a new o-ring around, around the case back to make sure it's sealed properly. And there is no damage by, even if it's not a watch, it's not a diving watch, but just to make sure like when you uh, wash your hand or something, no no water uh, or go inside the movement. Put this tension ring around. And now on the other side, I can go and put the hand. So first, we need to find the position just after midnight, which is meaning when the date is jumping. So we, we turn, we turn the crown until we have uh, the day jumping. And normally, oh, you can see it jump back. So it means that we are just after midnight. So now what we can do is we can set the day, the, the end, sorry, at midnight. So first we put the hour end, again with the carbon tweezers to make sure we don't damage the dials or the hand. We align it slowly to midnight. And we use a hand setting tool to push it down to the right level and that it stay parallel to the dial because yeah if he if he touch the dial you you will lose some amplitude in the watch and it will scratch after with time as well it will scratch the dial so we need to make sure it's parallel but above the dial. Now we put the minute end so again we align it to midnight. And we use the same tool uh, to push the end down. And the minute end, same, need to be parallel to the hour end, or else if the two end touch, the watch will uh, stop or slow down, and the accuracy, the time ac time keeping accuracy will not be good. So now let's do a quick check. Just look if they are parallel. Yeah, looks good. If they are not touching anything, and I accelerate a bit. Let's just check at six o'clock. They look they are aligned. And now we're going to check at midnight if it's changing properly or not. There we go. Here we come. Just before midnight. That's perfect. I like to have my time change 10, 10 minutes before or 10 minutes after midnight. Um, but this is where just two minutes before. This is very good. Okay. And the last is the second end, the central second hand so it's in place it's already moving and we're just going to press it down on the second pinion 
So I put now the watch on a time grapher and uh, as you can see, uh, the second per day are very good. I'm just losing three seconds per day, so that's quite good for a vintage watch. The amplitude is a bit low at uh, 238. Uh, maybe it would be better if I change the mainspring. Uh, and the bit error is a bit high, but on this type of watch, I'm struggling to change a bit error, so that's something I need to learn. So I hope you like the video. So please like and subscribe and uh, I see you next time.